Um, so strengths lies uh, in our differences, not in similarities. And this holds especially true to the cuisines of China. Um, uh, my question that I ask myself is, uh, what accounts for the differences in food production and cuisines between northern and southern China? Um, and my thesis is, uh, China's diverse cuisines are due to its dramatic climate change, or climate and the geographical differences, but it also has many other factors. Um, such as a strong nomadic influence and special dietary needs of religions. <coughs> okay, so as you can see in this picture before we can go over it, this is uh, found um, in a uh, tomb that was over uh, a thousand years old. And inside the art, you can see that they, they kind of go about their daily lives, but they also have an emphasis on food. Uh, they put it right there with, with uh, everything else that they do throughout their modern day, uh, or throughout their day. Um, Northern China uh, was, more, uh, was a more desirable place to live in uh, before the 7th century, uh, and that's because of the uh, temperament climate. It had a good climate for the, uh, for the time. Um, they would only get about 20 inches of rain, and this is important because um, when it rains less, you actually have less uh, spread of disease, um, which happened a lot more down in Southern China. Um, so actually you had about 60% of, of China living in Northern China rather than uh, Southern China. Um, um, but because of the, uh, the, the higher uh, climates that they had, um, so as you can see, like all of northern China, they have much higher uh, climates, um, uh, comparatively speaking to the lower uh, elevations. Um, and also they had a, um, there was a lot of flatland here, lots of flatland going throughout here, um, which actually caused the uh, Yellow River to flood quite often. But um, but they had shorter growing seasons because of the higher altitudes. Um, and because of the less rain, they weren't able to grow rice, which is very common, um, which most people think, oh, Chinese rice. No, they actually grew a lot of millet. Um, and they use that in a variety of ways. Um, they like to make uh, uh, gruel and uh, breads and noodles out of uh, millet. Um, and because of the, uh, the higher uh, elevation, they, um, they were more into a uh, uh, growing uh, sheep and stuff, uh, not sheep, I'm sorry, goats, uh, goats which, um, which they would get milk from, um, so they, uh, because of the, uh, the northern influences, they started making uh, fermenting uh, milks, um, and, and uh, their meat of choice was the mutton, so. And, so this is a picture of rice, just really like the artwork from, from China, they got some really nice artwork. And, and the thing that uh, is really cool about the artwork is that it took so long to make these pieces, um, and it really kind of shows how much they uh, liked, uh, you know, how much emphasis they had on food at the time, because they would spend a lot of time making these pieces. Um, Southern China was better suited for uh, growing rice, which I was saying. Uh, they got 40 to 80 inches of rain a year, which is uh, substantial. But again, that contributed to the malaria and stuff, so not a lot, it wasn't the best place to live, um, especially in earlier China. Um, but as trade uh, expanded, uh, they started, um, so the Chinese were really big into, um, to, uh, shoot, they, they were really big into pretty much seed selection, like selecting their, their better um, crops and stuff. Um, and as the trade uh, got into Vietnam more, they started to realize that the Vietnamese rice actually grew a lot faster. So they get two harvests a year. Um, and this allowed for a surplus in food. Um, and uh, with the surplus in food, a lot of people started moving there because you could have, you know, you could have, start having cash crops at this point. Um, and um, they, uh, they had a huge increase. Uh, remember how I was saying they're about 60% in the north? Well, by the end of a 200 year span, they went down to uh, northern China only had about 40% of the population and southern China became the economic center which got it up to about 60. Um, also, you can see here, um, during this time, during this time between the Tang and the Song Dynasty, they had a, they had a large increase um, because of this rice production um, in the population. So the size of the population actually went from 60 million people to about 100 million over a relatively short span of time. Um, uh, and then as you can see right after that, they started dying from the Black Plague and, and other things. Uh, and Mongolians coming in and killing a lot of people. 
Um, and then contrasting, the biggest differences between Northerners uh, food-wise is that uh, the Northerners really liked uh, lamb, um, onions, garlic, uh, and then obviously their yogurts. We're really big into the yogurts. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and Southerners uh, really liked uh, fish, sugar, uh, tofus, um, and they had a lot, they had a big uh, thing into tea. Um, they really liked tea down there. Um, the, uh, a lot of Southerners that came up to the North to um, kind of experience their culture, especially because the capital was in the North, um, the, um, the Southerners would actually try the yogurt and they hadn't uh, developed a, uh, you know, they hadn't developed the enzymes to break down milks. So they would actually get extremely sick and they thought that the Northerners were pretty much trying to poison them um, because of this. <laughs> and. Um, and the, but the uh, the southerners um, generally considered them to uh, the northerners to be barbaric, um, mainly because of their because uh, that they killed um, uh, red blooded animals. They didn't really eat red meat down in the south. That's why they went with the fish and the tofu. Um, and the uh, and the northerners when they would go south would have the opposite effect. They would actually look because tea was so sociable. Um, they would actually look kind of foolish because they wouldn't understand what tea was, they wouldn't like it, or they wouldn't drink it really. It would just kind of go right over their heads. And, uh, and one of the big reasons for the, uh, the tea and everything and, and, and a dietary difference is also because of Buddhism. Buddhism was more popular in the South, um, which, um, which attributed to, um, which Buddhism became really popular in uh, the late Han Dynasty. Um, but as you can see through their dietary choices, that, uh, that uh, you know, they weren't eating the mutton, so they weren't eating red meats, uh, they were eating more fish. Uh, tea became popular during the same time that, that this growth started to happen, uh, between the 6th century to the 12th century. Um, and it, it was just, it was really a big, big change because of Buddhism. Um, and teas became a very, um, uh, it was used like in a lot of common medicines and stuff at the time. So tea was really big down there because it was, it was so, because um, of the diets and stuff. And then um, my conclusion is that uh, North and Southern China had many influences that dictated their many uh, cuisine choices, be it religious or nomadic exposure or the major differences in the climate and geographical regions that they were given. It ended up making for one of the most diverse cuisine cultures in the world today. So because, you know, with more trade between the two, they started becoming more and more together in all their food choices. But the diversity between the areas in one country made for a big uh, change. Um, and then, it, these are just kind of some pictures that I, that I really like. Uh, this is a southern, um, this is about southern markets. Um, and as you can see, they have uh, restaurants and, uh, and then a lot of artistry, artisans. Um, so they would, once the population exploded um, and they had more food, they had more time on their hands to start making more items for trade throughout the world. And I don't know what's going on. You might want to click the space bar. Um, and then I was just, uh, this piece of art is, uh, well, it's actually a plate, but you can see that they, um, that they really, this is a southern plate, um, and they depicted a fish in, on the plates and stuff, which is also is another piece of art because it takes a lot of time to make these uh, fine Chinese pizza, Chinese uh, dishes. And then um, my last piece of art, which I'll kind of give in one last little thing, is that, uh, so this is a party during the Song Dynasty. Um, and, uh, and as you can see, they have a very, they put a lot of emphasis on the food. To, you know, they take up a lot of space with, the, with just the food presentation and everything. Um, there was a, uh, so the emperor um, at this time, he would, uh, he, had a, he had a great staff that would make him lots of food. He would actually get up to about 130 dishes uh, made for him for just one meal. And uh, he would only be able to try little bits of each one, um, but he would give those to his honored guests. He would give them to his concubines and, uh, and to his wife, his favorite wives and stuff. He would give those dishes that were made for him to them, which is kind of like an honor seen in their uh, society. So, uh, any questions?
Yeah, so you mentioned that um, at one point it was the distribution of the population was 60 40 north and south. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like you indicated that that was largely due to disease states in the south? Yeah, disease and, and this, the terrain. Um, from what I was reading, it, it did have more to do with like uh, with the rainfall, the heavy rainfalls all the time, um, that the south just didn't, um, and, and it was more uh, more vegetation everywhere, so it wasn't as easy to uh, build there as it would have been in the north at the time. Okay, because what ends up happening, I guess, is that they, they get a new strain of rice. They get a new strain of rice, so this uh, this led to like a um, like a, a, a revolution down there. They started saying, okay, well, we'll clear the fields because we can grow more rice down here. We can, we can make more food, you know, more food, more family, more family. It's like the number of acres under development actually increased? Yes, that's exactly. Okay. And, and they also um, started learning more technologies on how to uh, divert the, uh, the waters, too. Okay. So when you say uh, geographically, that's how they had their differences, um, was it that the South only could like grow the plants required for the teas and and stuff like that, or? Uh, yes. Well, the um, the tea leaf actually comes from a southern uh, mountain, southern mountain range that uh, connects kind of uh, from there to India. So Buddhism actually comes around from India. Um, so it was just one of those things that they were closer to the to the tea production as it was. So with like the milk products, was that just? Well, and that's because of the nomadic exposure. So okay. up up north, they had a lot more exposure to milk, mm -hmm. um, and so they were able to develop the enzymes to actually break it down inside their bodies, while the southerners never mm -hmm. really had that chance because they didn't grow a lot of, not a lot of goats lived on the that exposure. Yeah, in the lower areas. Is it fair to say that it's really not north and south, but high elevation China versus low elevation China? <laughs> Isn't that more really what you were at? Because it seemed to me like you saw the lowlands to the east where they were growing the rice and then it was higher to the west. I mean, on your map. Yeah, I mean, you could you could definitely say that, but the way that, that it, when, especially during the time, they viewed themselves as the northern China and southern China. That's how they saw themselves. Yes. Yeah, so whenever you read about the time period, they're always talking about northerners versus southerners. They're not really talking about lowlands versus highlands. They don't make that distinction. Any other questions? All right, hold well on.